the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Life is spiritual. Hebrews 11 and verse 3. Hebrews 11 and verse 3. Through faith, the Bible says we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. Do you know what that means? The mother that gave birth to anything physical is invisible. Now, there are mothers here with children and we are able to relate with that experience because both the mother and the child are physical. Is that true? But now, imagine that a mother is invisible and you just keep seeing children. You know that they come from somewhere the bible is saying that everything you see in your physical realm is only a child that the mother that gave birth to that child and continues to give birth to that child you call your physical realities is the realm of the spirit write this down please the realm of the spirit governs the physical realm very simple it will never never change the realm of the spirit governs the physical whether you are interested in being spiritual or not this is an, an information that your life depends on the realm of the spirit governs the physical realm you must understand the frailty of the physical realm with respect to the realm of the spirit that means with respect to the realm of the spirit this physical realm is very frail it is subject to change anything you see that is physical under a certain condition the realm of the spirit can superimpose upon it and change it it is both good and bad news the good news is that whatever is physical that is inconsistent with what god has said about you there is a provision by tapping into the supply of the spirit to change it the bad news is that when you are careless about any physical good thing an expression can come from the realm of the spirit and also change it to the negative an example while men slept the bible says the enemy came as a farmer and planted something you went to bed and woke up with something you can't remember going to bed with because the realm of the spirit controls the physical you must master therefore the keys that translate physical realities spiritual realities into physical realities you must master the keys that translate spiritual realities into physical manifestations you must master the keys that translate spiritual realities into physical manifestations can i tell you your your mastery when we say you are a master spiritually we define your mastery based on number one your knowledge of god but number two your depth of comprehension of the principles that are able to translate spiritual realities into their physical manifestation and that is the measure of true spiritual power i've taught you here that there is a biblical litmus test you know we like to say we are powerful every believer will say you are powerful potentially yes but experientially there are many believers who are not powerful the bible gives us an unmistakable um litmus test to know whether you are powerful or not let me show you for the sake of this teaching genesis chapter one let's look at verse two to four genesis chapter one two to four gives us the ultimate test of true mastery and spiritual power are you ready 
the bible says and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep then the bible says the spirit of god moved or hovered upon the face of the waters verse 3 and elohim said light be and there was watch this now true spiritual power is your ability to say and then it happens and god said and there was it doesn't matter what he said so like god when you rise to mastery to a point where you can say and it happens and god said and there was verse 4 and god saw what he said so you must see what you say and what you say when it appears it must be good these are the conditions the ability to say and it appears it becomes visible to your eyes and it is good that is spiritual power the ability to say and then it becomes then we behold it because the bible says the word became flesh and then it dwelt among us that which was invisible now gained a material expression and we beheld even the glory of God as of the begotten of the father full of grace and truth so if you are able to say and then it happens and then we see it and it is good you are truly powerful the centurion had this understanding and he came to Jesus and when Jesus said okay let me respect you by reason of your office and come to your house he said no there is something I know for I am a man under authority having soldiers under me I say to one go and he goeth I say to one come and he cometh Jesus speak the word only and Jesus said I've not found this faith I've not found this construction who taught you this who taught you that the true proof of power is the ability to say and it happens that God is bringing us to points where our words are no longer empty babblings and ramblings of men that your words carry power and what drives this kind of result is understanding the spirituality of life please say after me life is spiritual that means for everything that happens in your physical world trying to deal with it spiritually is proof of amateurism immediately are you seeing that many believers never really get to grow and to be strong why because we usually will address the issues of our life primarily from a physical standpoint the bible is full of many many instances where scripture tells us that our wrestle is not against flesh and blood is that true when jesus begins to deal with things he starts from the realm of the spirit when god wants to deal with things he starts from the realm of the spirit it is only men that deal with things physically and that's why there's hardly any victory so the financial situation the spiritual situation the health situation whatever condition it is the origin is from the realm of the spirit we have the privilege of learning this from the book of job i'm not going there because of time but the book of job theologically speaking is believed to be one of the earliest books in the bible because of the context and i'm not here to do any theological argument about it but the bible tells us that there was this man called job the bible records that he feared god and eschewed evil and then he said at a certain time that the sons of God came to give accountability before the Lord and Satan was in their midst and there was a discussion between Satan and God have you considered my servant Job and Satan began to speak and said does he fear you for nothing give me the permission to touch everything around his life and he will curse you to your face and he said all right so you go and then the Bible makes a very interesting statement he said there was a certain day that means there was a date allocated for that which was finished in the realm of the spirit to find expression there was a certain day it is your assignment as a believer to keep shifting that certain day so that it never manifests in your life that the conclusions in the realm of the spirit that means everything concluded in the realm of the spirit depends on your cooperation to give it a certain day 
when all that discussion finished in the realm of the spirit while it was happening i'm sure job got up and was enjoying with his children not knowing that time had been allocated for something in the realm of the spirit to find expression you're not gaining mastery will allow many certain days you are not part of why should a discussion happen in the realm of the spirit and its manifestation happen in this realm i become the principal victim and yet i did not contribute to choosing the day you read the book of esther you will learn that it was through divination they chose the day that haman was to strike they didn't just select any day it was a discussion in the realm of the spirit by divination to find what day is most appropriate for this transportation to come unhindered and they chose the date life is spiritual only god knows what god has planned no wonder the bible says this is the day that the lord has made listen 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 there is a day that just happens but there is the day that the lord has made there is a day too that satan has made all of them you can make your day god can make the day prophetically satan can make the day it is up to you to stand and through intelligence make up your mind that that which satan has programmed for me will not find material expression it is up to you this is the day that the lord has made can i tell you many believers have not experienced the day that the lord has made they have experienced days that they have made they have experienced what the bible calls the day of adversary or adversity the day you experience one full day that the lord made you will know his signature will be on that day that this is the day i made and can i tell you mastery can bring you to a point where every day becomes a reflection of the day that the lord has made i will tell you the things that are captured in a day that the lord has made he taught us a few of them in what we call the lord's prayer he said when you are praying remember that a day that i make i will always give your supply per day give us this day our daily bread that means any day you don't see bread in it someone else made that day that if god makes a day bread there does not mean food bread means everything that needs to make you efficient relationships anointings there is a day that the lord has made but just because he made it does not mean you will walk in it striving for mastery this is the day that the lord has made for the bible to tell you this one is god that made it it means there are many other expressions of that day there is the one satan can make ask job job did not experience satan's days every day the day he experienced satan's own we knew that this one it wasn't god that made this day because in one day losses and pain and wickedness and tragedy my question is the day you keep entering who made it that your life becomes a plethora of defeat and pain and nothing in it that makes for kingdom come nothing in it that gives god glory the bible tells us this is the day that means see it this is the product that samsung made this is the product that apple made you can see their signature on it there are fake shoes and there are real shoes there are fake everything and the real one and when you bring it before the person who made the day he can point to you you may not even know which is fake or real but they can tell you because there is every signature of authenticity over the product of the original maker there should be something on your life on your day on your destiny we will know that this is the destiny that the lord has made this is the home that the lord has made this is the ministry that the lord has made this is the business that the lord has made show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest will you show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway 
we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your end i want to give you in this part one two keys there will be extensive keys remember we are striving for mastery so the lord is taking away everything that makes for spiritual amateurism from your life listen be determined in this series that i will lay hold of this thing once and for all i'm tired of being in a situation and not know what spiritual law to engage i just keep applying anyone that's especially what we do blood of jesus fire of the holy ghost we carry a seed we don't even know that all of these principles have their exact there is the exact role that they play hallelujah i made up my mind that i would submit myself to learning and gain understanding and gain mastery from scripture over every aspect of the kingdom life that god will grant me the grace to pursue i still remain to, I remain a student pushing to, towards that mark that price of the high calling but i can tell you so far i thank god for that decision you can gain mastery listen to me ladies and gentlemen you can strive and go into perfection hebrews chapter 6 the bible says therefore leaving this this elementary principles of this and that he lists six of them foundations of the christian faith hebrews 6 and verse 1 it says therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of christ let us go on to what perfection not laying again the foundation and it lists six of them there are six of them that make the foundation but he says listen you can exhaust them and then go on to perfection the word perfection there is maturity stature let us go on to perfection that means i need to come to a point where my prayer works that every time i open my mouth to pray i'm not hoping it will work i can know that it works are we together imagine if the meal you plan to eat after service now the person cooking it is not sure if the food will be ready or it will be done how would you love to fellowship with that kind of person that with the hunger from service after praying and shouting you rush home and you find the person still wondering is it onion or put first say, what have you been doing for five hours say, i'm 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 really i'm not sure i just didn't want to make a careless mistake the person should not be there there are occasions that will only allow room for masters there are realms where you are not allowed to be on practice while you are there you must have done your homework the throne is not for learning no there is the cave of adulam that gives you an opportunity to do your trial and error but then when you are to get to the throne because one mistake on the throne will also be taken as law and people will pay the price for it god wants to bring us to greater levels of perfection and mastery let me give you three keys the first key that controls the pursuit for attaining unto mastery haven't understood the foundation that life is spiritual you want to translate realities from the realm of the spirit to be made manifest in this realm the first key is understanding prayer please write it down don't assume you know what i'm saying understanding prayer i can tell you many people pray but very few people understand prayer there are many believers who cannot tell you the role that prayer has to play as far as their actualizing destiny is concerned people just pray because you were born into a faith experience that prioritizes prayer so when we say open your mouth and pray everybody is talking we're saying all kinds of things and the results show that we are not gaining anything listen let me tell you this generally speaking this this i think um i think we'll, we'll have to look at it there's a scripture in my mind help me holy spirit haggai haggai chapter one i hope i'm right 
Haggai chapter 1. Please give us verse 5. Every time something goes wrong in your spiritual life, the Bible mandates, that's right, that you consider your ways. It means there is something wrong with your approach. We are reading 5, 6, 7, but let me take it slowly. Now, therefore, please go back to verse 5. It says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the reason why things don't seem to be working for you, consider your approach. There is something you have not understood. Verse 6. It says, you have sown much. Look at the various conditions that necessitate you considering your ways. You have sown much. A lot of effort, but little results. It says, you eat and you do not have enough. Insufficiency. You drink, but you are not filled with it. Ye clothe you, but there is nothing warm. And he that earned wages earned to put it in a bag that is full of holes look at he's describing negative conditions and he's saying consider your ways there is something wrong with your approach the outcomes are a report card that you need to strive for mastery are we together you have sown there's some little results but there's nothing much you eat but you are not satisfied there's insufficiency and then verse 7 he mandates you for the second time consider your ways everybody say the ways of god this is very very important so one of the keys is prayer james 5 and verse 16 let's discuss on prayer a bit if most believers understand the power of prayer i want to quote something here while i was studying for this series i came across a very simple quote by e.m bounds for many of you you have studied e.m bounds e.m bounds was an authority in the school of prayer and he wrote something that is very powerful i want to quote it please listen carefully he said of what infinite importance is the place of the intercessor is the place the intercessor holds in the kingdom of god is it not indeed a matter of wonder that god should give men such power it's a question he said yet there are so few who know what it is and how to take hold of its strength and pray down the blessing of god upon the world he bounds what he's trying to say is that the intercessor he's speaking with respect to intercession and he's saying that most believers do not know the kind of power god has given them in prayer and that only few have understood that if believers knew the power that was given to them in prayer how that they can rain down blessings from heaven they can convert spiritual riches and realities and give them material expressions if they truly understand prayer in mark chapter 11 and verse 24 mark chapter 11 and verse 24 therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray not if ye pray believe that ye receiveth them and ye shall have them please look up there is nobody who ever gains mastery in the kingdom mastery in converting spiritual realities into their material expression without understanding the ministry of prayer efficient prayer is taught you don't just pray you are taught to pray in luke chapter 11 i think it's luke chapter 11 from verse 1 let's look at it i hope i'm right the bible says and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place the he being jesus when he ceased one of the disciples said unto him lord teach us to pray as john taught his disciples everybody who prayed properly was taught to pray this was not an issue of prayerlessness like you've heard me say it was an issue of praying amiss they found out that they were dissipating a lot of energy in prayer but the corresponding result was not matching that energy and they said there's something we're doing wrong we have watched your prayer life jesus and we see the profound results that come you have gained mastery over the storms over the sea over the sick over spirits and we see you retreat to a place of prayer please teach us what you are doing because we are tired of guessing and jesus began to teach them the subject of prayer can i tell you the truth 
just praying arbitrarily it will take the mercy of god for you to gain mastery even through that approach to prayer you must be taught most believers do not understand the jurisdiction of prayer and the assignment of prayer in the believer's life i cannot teach this enough i see people pray sincerely but very few people can bring forth results can i tell you you've heard me say it nobody leaves what works the reason why there is a lot of prayerlessness and struggle is that believers there's their, their laxity to prayer is a report card they are telling you i'm tired of faking this thing it's not working it may give me a consolation of feeling spiritual but i don't understand to what end this is about if prayer really works for you you will not leave it he spake a parable luke 18 and verse 1 to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint god never prayed as god but when he became a man he prayed because men pray now that jesus ascended to heaven as a man he still prays because all men pray I've studied the subject of prayer a bit I can tell you and my assignment when I study things is to compress them to an expression that is very useful and applicable to the general body of believers and I found out maybe more but in my experience and I believe it is consistent from scripture and with scripture that there are four major assignments of prayer in the life of the believer i want you to write it and please never forget it no matter how many times you've written it write it down prayer according to scripture has four major assignments in the life of the believer number one the first assignment of prayer in the life of the believer is for growth and transformation in order of priority this is the highest assignment of prayer in a believer's life unfortunately most people have not tapped into this possibility that you gain mastery by evolving to superior levels of yourself even in the place of prayer luke chapter 9 and verse 29 the bible says and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering say prayer you can grow and you can be transformed in the place of prayer i show you a believer who does not engage in prayer consistently forget about mastery you cannot gain mastery in this kingdom if you ignore prayer and if you do not understand the assignment of prayer to your life growth and transformation jude jude 1 and verse 20 the bible says but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost prayer builds the believer prayer can turn a weak you into a strong you prayer can turn a very timid canal you into a spiritual version of yourself men ought always to pray and not to faint number two i just want to touch it quickly so that we'll move to the other one making requests and obtaining promises this is the second assignment of prayer from scripture for making requests and obtaining promises every time you want to make requests and you want to obtain promises the platform for making this happen is prayer philippians chapter 4 from verse 6 it says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto god making requests and obtaining promises number three very quickly the third assignment of prayer in your life is for spiritual legislation what is spiritual legislation decrees creating possibilities in the place of prayer decrees creating possibilities job 22 and verse 28 please give it to us quickly job 22 and verse 28 thou shall also decree a thing 
and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon your ways it, you shall decree a thing it happens in the place of prayer numbers 14 28 numbers 14 28 say unto them as truly as i live saith the lord as ye have spoken in mine ears so will i do unto you not just as as much as you desire if you speak in my ears i will do it just like you have said it making decrees obtaining promises then spiritual legislation and then number four warfare and intercession the last dimension and jurisdiction of prayer in the life of the believer is for warfare and intercession ezekiel 22 from verse 29 to 31 very quickly ezekiel 22 the people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and the needy yea they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully 30 and i sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that i should not destroy it he said but i found none as a result 31 he says therefore i have poured out my indignation upon them i have consumed them with the fire of my wrath their own way i have recompensed on their head saith the lord these are the four dimensions of prayer i've done this teaching i'm i'm, I'm reminding you for this series that if you want to gain mastery in this kingdom you must understand prayer you must understand prayer men ought always to pray and not to faint and that at any point you pray you are doing one or more or all of these four things engaging in that which makes for your spiritual development obtaining promises is like cashing a check in the realm of the spirit in the place of prayer number three making decrees and establishing realities in your life number four engaging the ministry of warfare and intercession at any point you go to pray these are the things that are captured in the prayer life of a believer unfortunately please look up many believers do not pray not for transformation not as a platform to obtain requests and make petitions not even to make decrees over their lives maybe they do a bit of it in church and largely most believers do not engage in the ministry of warfare and intercession no wonder the life of many believers remain defeated in spite of the fact that they are zealous for god they love god with all their hearts but they continue to find out that nothing in their lives is a capture of the grace the wisdom the power of god you must tonight make up your mind that for to honor my desire to strive and to rise to the point of mastery I must engage the ministry of prayer as a lifestyle as a lifestyle prayer as a lifestyle not a strategy for disaster management prayer as a lifestyle for most people conditions have to provoke you to pray a negative report and you quickly come to pray and satan knowing that when he wants to attack you he will not make the thing look so bad because it will call for emergency and you go and pray so he will allow gradually gradually until your prayer life goes cold and he will attack you in one day and you will be surprised understanding prayer i believe in the power of prayer i am a product of the ministry of prayer we must submit ourselves to the ministry of prayer you must obtain grace from god i pray that you will believe the things that i'm teaching you that a believer who is determined to pray with understanding please take note with understanding i submit to you that in the body of christ there is a lot of zeal people pray and pray and even if you are god the way you see people pray you are wondering why is this person's life like this i can tell you that most of our prayer is not guided by understanding for many believers we think is the stretch and the energy invested that is equal to results it is not so 
most believers do not pray according to scripture most believers do not pray according to knowledge there is such a thing as praying amiss have you read it in scripture apostle james said it is possible for one to pray amiss he says let that man not think he will receive anything from the lord prayer that every time you bow your knees to pray do you know how much of a blessing you will be if people know that your prayer really works so when you tell them i want to pray for you they are happy there are many people if they say i want to pray for you they just laugh at you because they know that you have not even sorted the subject of prayer you don't even understand what you are saying change that narrative with determination god wants the average believer listening to me to get to a point where you don't just pray but you understand the jurisdiction and the assignment of prayer whilst you are seated in one minute i'd like you to just begin to pray and obtain grace from god you are seated inside you are seated outside obtain grace let it be from the depth of your heart father i obtain grace i obtain grace to find my prayer altar back in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, someone is praying. She prande kaskede la hasibash, magata prande gede beleko siata. I obtain grace. I can pray negative things out of my life. I can pray the will of God into my life and destiny. You want to strive for mastery, you must understand prayer. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible recommends, listen carefully. The Bible recommends an approach to prayer. The most effective dimension of prayer, second only to praying in the spirit, is praying the promises of God write it down please praying the promises of God Isaiah 41 and verse 21 the word of God as you know defines the boundary of God's commitment to the believer that means God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provisions and the allowance of scripture let me repeat myself God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provisions and the allowance of scripture. The word of God defines the boundary of God's commitment to the believer. It says, produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. Do you know what this means? Approach prayer like a legal system in the realm of the spirit don't just say god bless me based on what don't just say god change my life you are god that's the kind of prayer we pray lord i'm tired of this situation arise oh god based on what he says produce your cause bring forth your strong reasons that means bring my word to me in prayer the scriptural basis that commits me to move on that wise are we together so the devil is plaguing your family plaguing your life and you say god i'm tired of this situation in jesus name i assure you you reported your situation but you didn't pray what is the basis lord bless me uh -uh. what is the basis even jesus himself i've taught you this when satan came to jesus he said it is written it is written is what gives strength to your prayer it is not what you are saying that gives strength to your prayer it is saying what is written when you say what you want it is not prayer when you say what is wrong it is not prayer is when you connect what you want and what is wrong to what god has said now that is prayer Father, your word declares that though my beginning be small, my later end will greatly increase. Based on this truth, in the name of Jesus, I place a demand upon the grace that makes for advancement and increase. Now you are praying. As simple as it sounds, I can tell you many believers will keep shadow boxing and believing they are praying. 
the promises of God I've taught you here that the Word of God contains three things essentially every time you open scripture the Word of God is a capture of promises principles and prophecies every time you open your bible you are interacting with number one the promises of god number two the principles of the kingdom number three prophecy can i tell you this if you are a leader here of a prayer group you're a leader here of any prayer platform don't just tell people pray 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 bring the scriptures that support what you are asking if not i can guarantee you you wasted your time Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. He would have said, God, this is not fair. He said, remember, I have worked diligently. In other words, remember what your word says about those who serve your house. Can I tell you this? If you know how to bring forth your strong reason, you can go to bed. You will commit God and, and destroy, dislodge anything that is not of God in prayer. I speak life, I speak life, you're gonna leave, oh my brother, my sister. I speak life, you are the head and not the tail, you will prevail. I speak life, don't give up the fight for your life. You shall live and not die. Listen to me. This thing you see is a very powerful song. But when you get to the place of prayer, you must find what God has said. Otherwise, you have not prayed. Father, I bring before you your word. Your word declares that life and death has been set before me blessing and cursing that I have the power to choose life. Now in honor to your word, I choose life. You are making decrees it's being registered in the realm of the spirit when you are saying it demons are hearing you and there is a basis for your confidence what is written father your word declares that a thousand shall fall by my side and ten thousand by my right side that none shall harm me it is not just what is written that blesses you is what is written that you have found and you engage with understanding even in the place of prayer i found your word and i did it it was a joy and a rejoicing unto me is someone learning so your first assignment when you want to engage in prayer especially in understanding is to make sure you have the patience to bring the scriptures that begin that that become the basis of your defense and of making your petition don't just go and pray and ramble around internet has made it easy to pray efficiently if you want to pray concerning your health say for instance you can go and just google prayers concerning health different scriptures will come is your responsibility to filter it by the spirit to the two or three if you can find just two or three that may be sufficient go to the place of prayer lord i bring before you this and you are praying kailashko prandakata and while you are praying you find out that things just begin to shift and change believers please hear me if we don't teach believers the power of prayer and gaining mastery even in the place of prayer many people will stop praying they will be tired and say this thing does not work the prayer that works is the prayer that is connected to scripture the prayer that work is the prayer that is derived of the spirit outside of the ministry of the word and the spirit prayer does not work let me repeat outside of the ministry of the word and the spirit prayer does not work it just becomes a motion of dissipating energy prayer is based on what god has said prayer is based on what you want that is connected to what god has said your first assignment is to find out what he has said that relates to what you want now you can go to the place of prayer 
with understanding the bible says this is the confidence we have that when we ask anything according to his will he heareth us so it tells you there is a possibility that you will not be heard if it's not according to his will hallelujah dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline 